What is up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Phil Platocha. Today we're going to be talking about the Nike Air Zoom Alpha Fly Next Percent. After 250 plus miles, what I like, what's going on to the shoe overall, and basically discussing the comparison of this particular shoe to the newest released model which came out maybe like a month or two ago of the Alpha Fly and why I'm using this one for the Chicago Marathon and not necessarily this one for reasons that may be obvious and some that may not be. So before we get into the video, make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel. If you're a continuous subscriber of the content and you are continuously watching the content itself, thanks so much. Love you guys very much. Without further ado, let's get into it. Okay, first things first, of course, the specs of the shoe will be right here. And as I've probably said multiple times before, and I think many will probably agree in some cases, this is probably one of the best racing slash everyday racer shoes on the market, in my opinion, based on just solely, you know, this technology that's involved with the shoe, this huge stack of Zoom X, which just makes every like landing basically feel like a pillow, a cushion. In if you're landing with a midfoot kind of stripe, but now if you're a little more violent of a runner like me, this technology here in the forefoot, again with the air pockets, just helps carry you along and helps reduce the level of impact you're basically taking first step. So I'll get into that a little bit more, but first things first, after 250 plus miles, we gotta see what the bottoms look like, right? So here we go. This is the left foot, here's the right foot, and then here are the heels for both shoes as well. So lots of cool things going on here, of course. I think we'll start with the, the easier of the two shoes. This is, of course, the left foot. As you can see, the wear and tear is mostly on the anterior side of the shoe. As you can probably guess, that's kind of a common thing to do. And it's obviously very smoothened out here in the forefoot area as well. These are my strike points for the shoe. And as you can see, because of this area right here getting smoothened out and obviously getting a little bit flatter, you can see that the interior side of the left foot is also beginning to see some wear and tear pretty interesting. I think this is just the shoe evening out the wear as it's coming along and you can obviously see that because of the weight of the shoe and its build and maybe even its design to some case, the foot tends to want to lean outwards when you land with the shoe but because the air pockets are designed the way they are, they help realign your foot to kind of hit back into this four foot straight foot uh, strike rather than going like a duck foot kind of uh, deal which I'm, I guess there's no issue with the duck foot if you're able to run like 440 pace or like five minute per mile pace with that type of form but basically the shoe is kind of helping you correct so you're not sitting entirely on an anterior decompression more or less the other thing I guess to note is because again this whole thing is just a, like a giant block of zoom x you will see in this midfoot to heel region that there's a little more wear and tear than usual. And that's of course going to be common because your foot does sink when the heel sits in the ground. And also this is mostly because factually the shoe is a four millimeter offset. So that four millimeters between, you know, the midfoot and the heel is like not so much and basically doesn't feel like a high heel. And you're going to use the Zoom X for some resistance when you're walking, if you're taking a stop or if you land in a certain way that this heel area is just gonna take some wear and tear. And I'm glad they got a little bit of reinforcement here. It's not a whole lot, but it does the job right so you don't sink any more than you really need to. So that's the left foot. And in the right foot, here's where all the good stuff happens. Of course, as you can see, just a little reminder, I've shredded all the rubber off in a similar way to I in which to I have done to the tempo next percents where I basically exposed the air zoom pocket on the anterior side of the shoe and the rubber has basically disconnected right about here as well. And as you can see, the forefoot area is smoothened out also pretty cleanly all the way through and it's almost getting to the point where the second air zoom pocket will be exposed as well. Now the billion dollar question, does the air zoom pocket still have some air? You better believe it does. So as far as I'm concerned, this shoe still has some life and it's already exceeding its expectations in terms of lifespan. Who knows, maybe I've jinxed myself and the next run that I do in this kind of shoe, the air zoom pocket is gonna pop and then everything's just gonna lean anterior and it's just gonna really hurt my anchor, my ankle, and it's just gonna put a damper to the rest of my day. Now here's some other things to note about the shoe at this point in time is the wear and tear on the 
fun Adam knit fly knit variation that's on the uh, on the upper of the shoe. So as you can see, I have this weird wear and tear here near like the ball of the foot, closer to the heel area. I think that's just like a one-off kind of thing. I don't think it's existing on the other shoe. And here the toe box seems to be okay as well. There's like maybe a slight burn of the Adam knit like right in this area, but it wouldn't be necessarily from the toes from the looks of it. It could be maybe from like sliding the shoe in, maybe it clips in this area, but it doesn't look too bad. Now, in the left foot of the shoe, here's where all the fun stuff starts. You can see that I've basically ripped to shreds this entire outer Adam knit material, which is interesting because again i don't typically rip uppers and i'm guessing this is just something that happens with the atom knit where the lifespan is pretty finite and it's not maybe necessarily due to the carbon plate and the air pockets and the zoom x it could play a big role in it but i think just the atom knit overall is just such a fragile yet strong material when it needs to be and maybe perhaps early on in the shoe's life that's when you're going to have the best Fit and the best lock with this Adam knit, but after a while, it's just its durability is going to fall apart. I don't see any sort of wear on the inside or near the you know this um, arch of the foot. Some people were saying that like when you slide into this shoe, it's going to like expand into the arch, and I don't see any reason that the Adam knit would be ripping for me necessarily. Maybe because my foot is leaning a little more anterior when I'm running in this particular pair. So that's just something interesting to note, of course. And yeah, as I've said with the right foot in particular, this forefoot area is like almost completely smoothened out, but the air pockets are still alive and kicking, but it is at the point where the air pocket is almost basically exposed. So all I need is like one good landing on like a sharp rock and this thing is like donezo for sure. So that's going to be something to look out for, but there's still some life in this shoe. And I think I will be taking it out for like a few more like race prep runs or like some harder tempo workouts before I officially retire one of my favorite running shoes from my lineup. Now here's something that I want to talk about in terms of comparing this model of the Adam Knit to my latest purchase, which is the pink, red, and white version of the Adam Knit, which I call White Fire on my Strava. Uh, there's two things that are pretty different about the shoe that I would like to discuss in a small detail, I suppose. So one of those things, of course, is the initial lock of the shoe. So when I first had the shoe, it was almost next to impossible to get through this heel collar and this like openness of the shoe and I could barely put my foot in and you had to use both pull tabs to get your foot into the shoe. And as obviously, as you go along with this, this kind of breaks itself in. It's not as tough anymore to do that. But for the first initial times of getting my foot into this particular pair, it was very difficult to do. The difference now with this version of the Alpha Fly is that this shoe collar is way looser and it's not nearly as like, uh, I would say, supportive in the heel. And I don't think it necessarily needs to be. I think that's kind of a good feature of the shoe to be a little bit loose in this area. And then you just work with, you know, your lock in the shoe box or the, the shoelace area here to make sure that's all correct. So that was one of the first things I definitely noticed about the shoe that were different. And the second is more or less the important part, at least in my opinion. And I'm trying to see and I don't think it's possible to see it here, but it is in the four foot toe box area right there. So here, it seems to be like some kind of like wax covering that's blocking this toe box, and that's cool. It doesn't seem to be super breathable from the looks of it. I'm sure it has some breathability because, you know, the shoe already in itself is very open. So I would think you would probably want to get some kind of openness there potentially, but you don't want it to be so loose that your toes are going to rip through it. So I, that's one of the things I've seen on this version of the shoe. And on this version of the Alpha Fly, that same wax is kind of there, but not so much, and it's not as prevalent as there is an actual, like, layering inside the shoe, which even has, like, on the big toe, these holes here to allow the shoe to breathe. And now this is where the trouble begins, I think, with the fit of this shoe because of how open this toe box area is. As you can see, I've discussed this many times before, that is blood from one of my toes that seems to be hitting that toe box area a couple of times here and there like during my first couple of runs with the shoe i have resolved the issue since but early on getting that fit 
perfect was not very easy and it was kind of due to the fact that this toe box feels a lot more open your foot does kind of swivel a little more in this shoe so you have to be more precise with your lock in it and that's why when i'm tightening this shoe i'm getting even to the third layering of shoelaces here to extra tighten them extra tighten them in that second and then of course get the lock down perfect just to make sure it's going to be you know snug and secure for your long runs or in this case the chicago marathon because that's kind of an all or nothing make it or break it moment is if i can tie the shoes right so no pressure right but yeah basically that's the two major differences i've noticed so they kind of swapped a little bit of the engineering from this heel area into the forefoot and it doesn't seem to be a really bad thing in my opinion but it is something to watch out for if you are planning on buying a new pair of alpha flies that you've trained with in the past into you know your race day and you're gonna go for something that's just fresh on the market there's like micro engineering things that happen so just be aware of that make sure you practice in the shoe you're gonna race in and yeah that's just kind of the things to note so i don't think i have anything much more to say other than you know the alpha fly is the alpha fly it does bring up a lot of controversy for some people when they look at it and they've never seen a shoe like this and they're just like whoa look at that zoom x look at those air pockets there's springs in the shoes but realistically it just makes for a really comfortable impact if you're a runner like me who's an aggressive midfoot forefoot type of striker and this is just a shoe i've loved uh basically ever since it came out and as someone who loved the Vaporfly and X% percent beforehand and transitioned into the Alpha Fly, I'll tell you that going back into the Vaporfly is pretty difficult. It is doable, but this shoe just way more comfortable and just feels a lot better in a race day scenario than most shoes that I've ever run with in my life. So it'll be interested to see what Nike does next, if there's going to be like an Alpha Fly 2 and how they're going to engineer that. But as of right now, this shoe is probably like the pinnacle racing shoe that I've worked with as of right now and if it were up to me I would probably race in this shoe like whenever possible every time possible so I think I'm gonna end the video here so thanks so much for watching if you guys got any questions or comments or concerns or you have a different experience with the alpha fly in a different color and how it feels definitely let me know in the comments below but yeah I think we're gonna end the video here so again thanks so much for watching I'll see you guys in the next one